Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to go over six ways on how you can save more money so at the end of the month, you have more money to invest. And tip number six might be one of the most important ones. So make sure to stick along till the end of the video. Let's jump right into it. Tip number one is save money on your rent. This will have a huge impact. Most of our money of our paycheck or if we have a business, most of the money that we make goes to our rent. So of course, the easiest, not the easiest, but the best thing you could do to save money on rent is not pay rent at all. So something that you can do is go live at home with your parents, if possible. I know not everyone has this option, but if you have a supportive family and there is room for you to go back home, this is definitely a good option on how to save a lot of money. And right now in 2020, it's becoming pretty much the norm. 52% of young adults are now living with their parents. So nothing to be ashamed with. And you don't have to live with your family. It doesn't, or your parents, your siblings for a whole year. It could just be two months, maybe three months, two or three months not paying rent is thousands of dollars saved because on top of living on your own or even living somewhere with a roommate, you have your rent, utility payments, groceries, and some other money that you have to put here on the side. So thousands of dollars saved. But like I said, I know not everyone can live with their family or their relatives or their siblings. So if you are going to get a place of your own and you want to save money so you have more to invest at the end of the month, maybe consider living with roommates. This definitely will help because like I said, most of a person's paycheck or what they bring in every month goes to their rent. And if you're spending 50% of your monthly income on rent, you likely will have no money at the end of the month to invest because on top of the rent, you also have to pay for utilities, health insurance, and some other expenses. So make sure to keep your rent as low as possible. Tip number two, avoid designer clothing and stick to just a few key staple pieces. People wear expensive clothing to impress other people and they think that people are taking notice. But let me tell you, no one's really paying attention. Yes, it's good to look nice, but you don't need to buy that Gucci t-shirt or the Gucci sweatshirt for $800. You might think people are paying attention, but they're really not. And in psychology, there's something known as the spotlight effect. This is a phenomenon where people believe or they think that they're being noticed more than they really are. But I'm just telling you right now, people are not paying attention to you as much as you think. And Winston Churchill said it best. He said, quote, when you're 20, you care what everyone thinks. When you're 40, you stop caring what everyone thinks. And when you're 60, you realize no one was ever thinking about you in the first place. Now, when it comes to dressing and presenting yourself, it is important. I'm not here to say that you should look like a mess. There's a difference between looking messy and, and looking clean, right? But you don't need to spend $5,000 on a Rolex watch. I'm telling you, trust me, when you have a Rolex watch or you have a Breitling or you even see someone else have a Rolex or a Breitling, it's a nice, it's a nice thing, but no one really cares. So save your money at the end of the month and invest it. And if you do want to buy these things, you know, go ahead if you enjoy it, as long as it's just a small percentage of the money you have. If you're spending 50% of what you have, 80% of what you have on these luxury items, you won't have money at the end of the month to invest. So when you do buy things, just stick to a few key staple pieces. Things, usually colors, black, white, blue, gray. I'm not trying to become a fashion channel here, just this is my little fashion advice. So buy those few things and you can wear them in multiple ways, in multiple settings. And for the guys on this channel, I can't speak to the girls, but for the guys, you might have 20 pairs of pants, you might have 20 jackets, but you usually find yourself maybe just rotating between four or five pants or maybe two or three jackets. So just stick to a few key staple pieces, avoid the expensive clothing, like I said, that no one is paying attention to, and you'll have extra money at the end of the month to invest. Tip. Number three, cancel subscriptions for services that you don't use. Now I'm a fan of subscriptions. If you have a subscription of an app that enhances your life or will improve your future, continue using it. 
but many of us just have apps sitting on our, you know, that we're being charged for every month because we forgot that we even had it. And every year there's an automatic renewal we don't even know about. So go into your subscription settings. If you have an iPhone, you can go in the app store and look at this. Android, I don't know, I don't use an Android, but find out what you're paying for. And if you're not using it, cancel it. Tip number four, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a method of eating for only a certain period of the day and then fasting for the rest of it. There are, def there are many different ways to do intermittent fasting, but the most common or one of the most popular ways is the 16-8 method. This is where a person eats from only 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then they fast for the rest of the 16 hours. Now this is a mix of a health benefit and also a money saving benefit. So the primary case here is more of a health benefit. There are, there are very few people you will find that will say that intermittent fasting is idiotic or stupid, but they might say that when it comes to losing weight and maintaining your weight, while intermittent fasting might be a good choice, there are better alternatives out there. So the first part here is, is it can help you lose weight and it can help you maintain your weight once you lose that weight. Now, the second part is the money saving tip. In the case of the 16-8 method, pretty much you don't eat breakfast. You don't eat until 12 p.m. So just if you have a breakfast of maybe you buy coffee every day or whatever you make at home costs you $5, at the end of the month, that's $150. So that's $150 that you can save. And then after the year, that's over $1,000. But it's more than just the breakfast because when you practice intermittent fasting, you become very disciplined. You have to eat, in this case of the 16 8 method, from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And after 8 p.m., you're done. So what this does is it prevents people typically from those late night cravings. And when people really start to follow this and they're really sticking to it, they become very disciplined and they stop or they avoid junk food. And it's very important that when doing this, a person stays hydrated. And I also want to mention for those who never tried intermittent fasting before, the first week or two will be pretty painful because your body is not used to this. Your body needs this food and you're taking it away and it doesn't know what to do and you start feeling symptoms. But if you know anyone, maybe you have a friend or a relative that is successfully practicing intermittent fasting, They'll tell you that once you get over the hump of that one or two week period, you actually become sharper, a clearer thinker, just more on your game for the day. So that's the first part, you have the health benefit and then you're also now skipping these meals and then likely you'll be skipping those late night cravings and that includes takeout from things like Uber Eats or Seamless. Spending money on takeout is expensive to begin with but then when you add on the delivery charge, the tip, the service fee, it becomes a lot of money. So overall with intermittent fasting, you become very disciplined, very disciplined, very in control of what you eat and you eat healthier and you spend less on money. You spend less money on food, meaning there is more at the end of the month to invest. Tip number five, when you make more money, do not spend more money. Typically, when people make more money, they just spend more, they up their cost, they get a nicer apartment, they get a nicer car, they get a nicer watch. But this is going to leave you with no extra money to invest at the end of the month. Let's do an example over here. If there's a person making $50,000 a year and they're thinking about buying a $10,000 car, but then all of a sudden they get promoted and now they're making $60,000. So they think they're $10,000 richer but what most people do is they'll take that extra $10,000 and they'll just apply it to buy a more expensive car. So now in this case, the same person, instead of buying a $10,000 car, is gonna buy a $20,000 car. And really, they did not save any extra money to invest. So the goal here with this tip number five is that when you make more money, when you get promoted, when your business does well, whatever, you come across more money the goal is to maintain your current lifestyle. Do not up your lifestyle immediately. And tip number six, this one is huge, start small. When new investors get into the space, they feel that they need a lot of money to get started. They need 5,000, 10,000 because 
What's $100 going to do? What's $50 going to do? What's $20 going to do? And I'm going to tell you what it's going to do. It's going to add up into massive amounts of money over the long run, over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It becomes a lot of money. This is different than trading. If you're trading in the short term, yes, you probably do need a lot of capital. But over 20, 30 years, all it takes is small amounts. So if you have $20 sitting around, $10 sitting around, you can get started and you can invest. And this is especially easy with cryptocurrency because with cryptocurrency, you don't have to buy one Bitcoin. You don't have to buy one Ethereum. You can buy a small percentage. You can buy 0.001 Bitcoin. You can buy 0.05 Ethereum. So all it takes is starting small and over the years, it adds up. Just make sure that if you are going to buy in small amounts with $20 here, $50 here, that you're avoiding high transaction fees. When you're using an exchange such as Gemini or Coinbase, the fees are very expensive. So it actually will make you less profitable in the long run if you're paying these high fees. So instead you can use an alternative such as Coinbase Pro, which is the sister site of Coinbase, very cheap fees. Another place is Kraken, and another exchange is Binance. Very cheap fees, start small. All you need is $10 and you can start investing. And the younger you are, the better it is. If you start this at age 18, 19, you have a huge, huge advantage. Even if you're just putting in $20, $50 a week or a month. Also, when it comes to stocks, you can do this as well. It used to be with stocks that you had to buy the whole thing. If a share of Apple was selling at $110 and you only had $50, you're out of luck. You can't buy that share. But now in 2020, and I do believe these exchanges copied cryptocurrency with these small percentage, these fractions, you can now buy fractional shares. So on Robinhood, you don't have to buy a full stock of Apple. If you want to buy Tesla, but it's too expensive, you don't need to buy the whole stock. You could put in $10. You can put in $20, you can put in $30. And what's great about Robinhood and, and places like Fidelity, which also offer fractional shares, is that there's zero fees. So there's no excuse. You don't need $5,000 to get started. This is what I feel holds a lot, back a lot of people or people that I've come across. They never started, they never got into investing because they're saving up to invest. They're waiting till they get 5,000 or 10,000. Really, even in today's world, technically all you need is $5 and you can get started. And if you have any tips that you think are helpful as well so that you save more money, so at the end of the month you can invest it, please put it down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, simple, go down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.